Hey, welcome to Tough Crowd. A new study with college kids by the American Psychological Association has found there's a connection between violent lyrics and aggressive behavior. Now, the scariest thing is that kids, little kids, listen to the same music as college students, and they're really easy to get going. I'll tell you a true story. My cousin Maud and Ian, we, they used to live in Queens, shout out, and my cousin Maud and Ian, they were like five or whatever, and my cousin Maud goes, Ian's teasing me, so I'm like 11, you know, I'm a wise guy. So I go, go hit him with a hammer. I swear to God, she goes over and smashes him right in his head with a hammer. He's got like 40 stitches. The adults are like, what's wrong with you, Maud? And I'm looking at her like, don't, don't, there's enough hammers for everybody. But, uh, and I never told that story till, till right now. So now my cousins are going to be like, oh, that son of a bitch. You know, I let her take the fall for me. That's how I am. Of course, violent music causes violent behavior. Everything violent causes everything. I'll say one thing about today's musicians, at least, okay? They may uh, have violent lyrics, but at least they practice what they preach. At least they take their assassination attempts like a man. They just pick themselves up, dust themselves off, empty a clip into the competition's clothing store, and get back in the studio. Now, we all know music does, violent music influences behavior. You never see anybody, I once got stabbed at a Nora Jones concert. Now, I'm not kidding, <laughs> folks. Uh, let me tell you, that's why my new policy, if it was up to me, all jails would pipe in only like frat rock. It's hard to start a prison riot when Dave Matthews is blasting in the background. Mm. <laughs> You're killing. It doesn't matter. The point is this. There are very few beatings at a fish concert. If you get your ass kicked at a fish concert, you must be a real jackass, don't you think? <laughs> so my question is, what's worse, censoring what our kids are listening to or dealing with violent kids? Keith? Well, uh, Murder, She Wrote Sweater, I'm going to tell you what's worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I, you know what I think here, since we I'll take that as a compliment. It is. It's great. <laughs> since we're talking about violence and music and stuff, let me say this right up front. If Ruben Studdard loses on American Idol, there's going to be some stuff to pay. That's what I want to say up front. Back to the topic. We're going to do the top. Okay. All, right. All right. Retire Larry Bird. We'll get to the top. It's, it's, it's goth Larry Bird. You're right. Yeah. You got me. Here it is. Okay, you listen to I listen to music according to my mood. Whatever mood I'm in, that's what music I listen to. And you know, like basically like you were saying, if I'm gonna do a drive-by, I'm not gonna put on Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. It's just not gonna work with you. Know? Get the gun. My mother, mother. <laughs> no one talks about the studies that show that bad music makes people violent. Like Nickelback makes me wanna kill Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so old, I don't even know who Nickelback is. Um, I'll have to agree with yeah, Nick They're not good. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> they're horrible. Let's just, yeah. just trust me. <laughs> Isn't it supposed to incite? Music is supposed to incite, and, and that's the whole idea of rock and hip-hop and provoke. You know what I mean? I'd hate sure. to think my favorite NFL team is listening to the Dixie Chicks before the big game. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think people are looking at that as a double-layered kind of political yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, I confuse them you with Dixie I mean? Chicks. Okay, Nickelback. Yeah. It's Nickelback. Pink. Pink we all Nickel know bag. that everything, if you, don't you think it's narrow to just say music influences? I mean, the whole media, everything influences kids to act crazy now, no? Well, you can't blame music for kids' violent behavior. Well, that's not what no. I was saying, but I was kind of blaming it. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> it's their, they get this thing jumped on. <laughs> it's no. their stupid brains that make them do stupid right. stuff. You it's can't, not the music. Right. You cannot blame a song for someone, you know. It's the parenting. Yeah, once you, again. Yes, if it is the parenting. Yeah. Some songs you can blame. I'm telling you. I, my uh, son's mother... Oh, wow, so you, what is this? I'm trying to tell you what happened. What, are we on what, what is this, Ricky Lake? <laughs> yes, it is, stupid. I'm a, let me get he it out. He has a very close <laughs> relationship with his he son. Me, just what happened. I mean, she used music for me to get her pregnant on. She put it like a relaxation tape, and I, I was helpless. <laughs> you know what, Keith? Don't take any responsibility for anything you do, okay? All right, let's talk about the next uh, big issue. Speaking yeah. of... Well, Maybe this will get things going. If this doesn't, we should all quit. Okay. Uh, according to ABC News and the Washington Post, oral sex is now on the rise among young teens, okay? Right. Now, these kids are crazy, okay? <laughs> they, have too much, they have too much time in their hands. That's right. what I say it is, right? See, uh, I think with the, we've got to get... Uh, 
First of all, a little girl down the hall from me, uh, you know what she got for her 10th birthday? A Brazilian bikini wax. Now, I'm going to tell you people. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> but the point is, if they, we should go back to like slave, child labor. Like in Indonesia, you don't see kids having uh, sex with other little kids. They're too tired from a nice shift at the Nike factory. He's like, honey, the foreman's been on my ass all day. Really, I'm not in the mood, you know? <laughs> Why is this happening, Nick? Why is this happening? I have no idea, but I wish I was 12 again. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even get a hand job when I was 19. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. But these ki what's funny is these kids are actually blaming Clinton. Did you hear him saying? Right. President Clinton said oral sex is not sex. Right, right. That's, I mean, come on. That's, you know, when I prematurely ejaculated on my first girlfriend, I didn't blame, you know, Reagan's trickle-down theory. I mean... <laughs> Come on, I'm defending Clinton here. I'm, yeah, I know. Which is even but more I, I never even knew about uh, oral sex when I was uh, coming up. Because yeah, you couldn't get it, you know. You just couldn't get it. Right. Black girls wasn't no, doing it any damn way. No, black girls wasn't giving yes, oral sex were. in the 70s. No, they weren't. They weren't yes, doing it. Yes, they were. That's why black men was leaving black women to go to white women, because they said that they would give you a good black right. That's what really happened. Oh, what? Oh, you filthy rotten shit. <laughs> How dare you? All right, listen. Or Kids, like, since sex education started, what's going on in sex ed? What are they teaching I, these crazy kids? The, the reason they're doing or Oh, what, Brian? I think oral's happening so much because they're not learning about anal. That's the, <laughs> the main problem. That's a good point. Is they just think that that's where duty comes from, and, right. uh, and they're right. They don't learn about the back door. And right. <laughs> you think it's a shame? <laughs> yes. Wow. we got to bring that back. I think that's, kids are bored. No. I mean, I was not having oral sex. Well, I just think, no, I do, I think kids are bored. Why are they having and those kids in school? There were two kids in, in a, what was it, right. science class? Oh, yeah, having oral sex. In the back yeah, of the class. The oral, and the, the teacher the didn't even know. They're trying to blame the teacher for that. Blame the guy that designed the school desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a job. Now, let me ask I you this off the subject, Thank but you. still on it. Yeah. Uh, Judy, even though you know you're gay, I know you're gay, but if you had had oral sex with... Whoa, whoa, Judy's gay? She always says that on show. I wasn't until I met you. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> when you ever thought of having oral sex with a guy, didn't you yes. think, like, 10 years ago I was kind of skinny, good-looking MTV? Didn't you think it would probably, you would have had oral sex with me if I asked you? I, that... <laughs> to say that that is the one thing that really I can't stand doing to a guy. I can't believe When's I'm talking about this. the last time you tried this. it? A long time ago, but I really didn't Times enjoy it. Times have changed. Yes. We got all kinds of, yeah, peppermint sprays, yeah. everything. Right. Well, um, <laughs> for the love of Pete, don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. <laughs> Well, you know, I like to mix it up a little. Oh, <laughs> you guys missed a big scene over here. Did that music right. make you do that? What's that? <laughs> what? music. That music made me do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, it made me do it. The, um, now, what happened today, I was reading Saddam looted a million dollars out of the bank of Baghdad with him and his sons, piled in a truck and robbed the place. Last week, a billion dollars. Last week, 10 Wall Street firms were ordered to pay $1.4 billion in fines and damages for misleading their clients. So what is the difference besides the 400 million? Uh, you know, they didn't pull up a truck to the bank. Obviously, in this case, they just told Aunt Tilly from Dubuque that the hottest stock was AOL Time Warner, and to put all her measly uh, sewing machine operated pensions into her null arthritic, hardworking American hands and uh, get in while the getting is good. So, is there a way to stop this uh, nation destroying practice? Yeah, stop investing. Put all your money under your bed. <laughs> That way, when the apocalypse comes and we're all living in tent cities, you can use your money to keep warm. Burn it, and <laughs> ten minutes later, you, you'll be dead, but it'll keep you warm for ten minutes. That, you know, if it was anyone else saying that, we'd know it's a joke, but you have that look like you may have the look. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> the rifle, the sign. Yeah. Yeah. He took over the old Weaver place. Did you know that? After a... <laughs> Shot Randy's wife. Randy, Randy Weaver. Randy Weaver. Right. All right. The inventor of the sideburns. Yeah. <laughs> I knew these were going to get me into trouble. Yeah. I got more respect for guys who put a ski mask on, go into a bank, stick a gun at somebody's, you know, people like Keys people <laughs> that do stuff like that. Oh, what a, that's it. Wait a you minute. Know, He's got a good point. As opposed to Mike. <laughs> 
suppose. What am I playing? But NYU idiots? Yeah, geez, these are jokes. <laughs> you smile when you say that. No, I am, absolutely. Anybody? <laughs> hey. We're trying to get Nick to turn over a new leaf. Yeah. yeah. And show him the crowd. I thought I was on Tough Crowd. <laughs> I thought I was on Tough Crowd. Then I come out and, you know, Colin's wearing John Lennon's sweater. <laughs> But I, but I do. I respect bank robbers more than a guy who sits behind a desk who graduated from Harvard and screws me out of my, you know, twelve hundred bucks right. from the funny bomb. So don't you think that these executives, in a way, they're guilty of treason? Because if you break the economy, I mean, I think it should be the death penalty. I always say this for like the, this guy that had a Tyco, one of these guys. They should be part of the death penalty too, because then people stop doing this, or at least they'll know we mean business. It'll. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Kind of a little oh, ridiculous. Why is that ridiculous? I'll tell you why. You can't give the nothing? death penalty no. to someone who is misleading their clients. To misleading? Buy. They're right. They're ruining the entire fabric well, of the I system think of America. I think that's horrible, but it's not treason. It's it's. it's what is treason then? If it's not ruining treason. the fabric first of, of all, the damn country. I mean, I, first of all, the stock market is gambling anyway. That is gambling. Yeah. Period. So what, Nick? I'm sorry. Yeah. But if they said it was gambling, I think you know less people would do it. People think it's a good way to, like, you know, hedge their bets, save their money. Right, but it isn't. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, these people are just giving misinformation, and these idiots are listening to them. I know. And then they sell their stocks, just like our president, who uh -huh. sold his stocks for his Texas oil company. Oh, what does this mean? What, what does that, that mean? So I mean, I know what that means, but, you know, I'll explain it after the show. <laughs> He's all the dice. He's gambling. He's all the dice. dice. He's all the dice. It goes back to Act One. Yeah, but the death penalty is too harsh. You should just punish them like everybody else. Put them in a real prison instead of that's uh, right. one of these right. country exactly. prisons. That's right. That's true. Put them in a rapey one. Put them in a oh, rapey yeah. prison. Yeah. Where, but that's uh, a rapey one. You say that lightly, but but that's no white collar prison. They go to the rapey prison. No. Yeah. Right. Right. You can get your applause break, but that will open up the back door that he was talking about before. Oh, uh, but still, it's very glib to say that, but it's, you know. It's and put, him in, it's put, him in, put him in jail. I think it is too, uh, you know, extreme to have the death penalty. Maybe a make Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> well, well, really, how about, a make, how about this, Nick? Even you'll go with this. How about a make him wish he was dead penalty? Wouldn't that be better? <laughs> yeah. No. You know what I'm saying? What is that, dinner at your house? <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing the subject. Wow, Everybody's right. wrong Keep except for me. Now listen to this. President Bush's uh, new economic plan calls for $726 billion in tax cuts, and a lot of it's going to go to big business. Now, do you think, uh, first of all, let's be honest, what I hate is when Hollywood people go, oh, the corporate America, we are just as guilty. All these Hollywood people that cry about it, they have the biggest write-offs in the world. Write-offs is basically, like why do some jobs have write-offs and some don't? Like if I have lunch with anybody and I bring up Tough Crowd, the hot new show, then I can write it off. I can write it off because I brought up the show because it's business. Two construction workers can't do that. If they're sitting on a beam having sandwiches, even if they're talking construction, a pretty girl walks by, is like, wow, she's built. I'd like to nail her. You know, that's sort of a way to They can't write it off. Now, that's what I call, uh, you know, disparity. Why is that? You know what I mean? Judy, let me ask you this. Yeah. Is it a good plan to have big business help in the hopes of uh, trickling it down to the regular person? Well, I'm wondering why, why you asked the Jew the question. <laughs> that was my big joke for oh, that question. Anyway, no. The, 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 the um, tax cut that Bush is proposing is, is not good for the average American, working American. It is cutting dividend taxes. And who gets dividends? The rich and the retired. The retired don't go out and buy computers. Uh, and, and This is true. Uh, Shut uh, up. Uh, my brother's an accountant. Anyway, so, yeah. shockingly enough. Anyway. <laughs> You're cutting taxes That's, for the rich. The rich but they, are, are not, what are they going to do? They're, they're not doing anything to well, help the I poor. Think she, what? I do a lot to help the poor. What? Me too. You're not rich. You are poor. I am rich. You I am are? rich. You know how much money I make off this show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm eligible for Section 8 housing because of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come back after this commercial or you'll incur the wrath of a vengeful God. In this time of economic uncertainty and post-war anxiety, let's not forget what baseball is all about. Money. For the players, not the fans. I agree with you guys. Hey, would you guys write this garbage? Now, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm among the audience now. Baseball fans still believe in the magic of their favorite sport. Let's go to Yankee Stadium and meet a few happy New York fans. There they go, the nerd and the jock. You told me if I helped you with your physics homework, you'd take me to the Yankee game. I know. And I took you, didn't I? 
This is not a game. We're sitting next to a tree. <laughs> we'll be in the game in a minute. Hold on a second. I'm going to try to cut out on you. These tickets. Hey, these tickets say Green Bay Packers at Vikings in 1981. No, that's that's the code for the good section. All right. Hey, do I look like a scalper to you? Come on. Do I look shady? Now, here's what I'm telling you. If anyone slips, if if they slip on mustard, you get Goldens, you sue them, and the stadium. And uh, who knows? Maybe these sneakers, it depends what kind. I mean, if they're going to be good. Really? I believe it's a bonanza. So what? The guy called us bare naked ladies. Ignore him. I'll tell you something. I go to the game, but it was with ironic distance. This is why I have the purple baseball hat. Yeah, I'm wearing a jersey, but I'm deconstructing. See what it says in the back? Voltaire. See? And look at this guy right in front of those two. He's like, oh, did I sever the hip and leave it in the pot? I didn't leave. If I left the pot on with that foot in there, they're going to catch me. You know, I worry too much. I just got to let it go. <laughs> this guy's like, all right, electrolysis. Very funny, you little bastards. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, why? Because I'm not ashamed. Daddy's not ashamed. Of yeah, I'm a little hairy. Here you go. Yeah, have a good laugh. I like Abercrombie, but Fritch is an ass. <laughs> okay, now remember, Raymond, just go in the stadium. We better, yeah. Yeah, Jeter's going to hit 309 this year. Raymond, you don't know. Yeah, definitely hit 309. <laughs> How many times has the short guy had to stand between him and somebody else and go, listen, he's a little wasted, okay? Don't apologize for me. We don't want to fight. I'm just going to get him out of here. Come on, Kevin. You don't have to apologize for me. I'll fight my own battles. <laughs> This guy's like, no, no, that's the schmuck's interest, honey. We don't go in there. No shopping. Good ball game. Not shopping. Shopping tomorrow with your sister. Today, my day. Mel's day. Well, that's really something, isn't it? Now, let me ask you something. First of all, I'd like to ask you, uh, what do you, uh, you said Brian bit your look a little bit, huh? Yeah, he's got my glasses. You think he just did that deliberately because you were showing up? Yeah, he knew it was coming. Oh. And uh, how about you? Do you like the Yankees? Yeah. Which Yankee do you think reminds me the most of you? And lie if you say Roger Clemens. Derek Jeter. <laughs> See, folks, that's what it's all about. Oh, great, it's a Met crowd. Anyway, I didn't know we were shooting in Philly Stadium. All right, well, we'll be right back, so stay right there. Folks, thank you for coming back. Let's give me a new character, kind of like the humble guy. I was like, hey, thanks for coming in. You know what I mean? Teenage sex sounds like fun, folks. Of course, let's be honest, it is fun. But there's a downside. Disease and heartbreak. What advice would you give kids to stop them from having sex at such an early age? Brian Posehn. Hey, kids. Abstaining from sex sounds hard, right? Nope. It's easy. I did it. First step, read more. Read more. Read a lot. Science fiction and horror is best just for fun. Second, watch a lot of comedy, but not the kind of comedy people like. Instead, watch British shows like Monty Python or The Young Ones. And quote your favorite episodes. Girls love that. Third step, be six foot two and weigh only 100 pounds, wear Woody Allen glasses, get a bowl haircut, and talk about how you love your mom. Follow these steps and you won't get laid till you're 21, you start doing stand-up and some 35-year-old bar fly is lonely and really, really drunk. When you finish the act in 30 seconds, tell her it's because she's so much hotter than girls your age, then try it again. Work for me. All right, good thinking. Judy Gold, what's your advice? Uh, my <laughs> advice, is, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything to the teens. I would just show them a tape of their parents having sex. <laughs> Now, if that doesn't work, I'd show them a tape of me and Sharon having sex. Now, if that doesn't work, I'd show them a tape of Liza Minnelli and David Guest having sex. Yeah, like there is one. Anyway. You're up. <laughs> to really get through to the kids, I would talk to them like a drill sar sergeant. You disgusting little maggots. Do you think you're really going to just pull down your little Batman underwear and pump up the volume? Well, you're wrong. Be strong, you weak little perverts. If I can fight off sleeping with teenage girls, so can you. Oh. Oh, Nick DiPaolo. First, I'd tell him to stay away from peripheral things that lead to sex, like alcohol, drugs, Eight o'clock mass at St. Vincent's. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> he said it'd be hilarious. Huh? Ah. <laughs> then I'd tell him about some uh, horrible consequences of sex, like sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancies, uh, waking up next to someone who looks like Marilyn Manson, or, or even worse, Melissa Rivers. Oh. And finally... <laughs> It's the new like night, to, Nick. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> I'd like to explain to girls how having sex with a young guy is like getting your toe stepped on. It only takes a second, it's gonna hurt, and he'll be apologizing the rest of the night. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I, uh, the new hey. You know what? Oh. Now, kids, I got one too, by the way. Does anyone care? Good. Sure. Kids, I know sex seems exciting, but so do a lot of things, you know? But if you have sex with each other in the early teens, you'll never realize the beauty of masturbation. <laughs> that is what the teenage years are supposed to be about, masturbating to what you think sex is going to be like. So it's actually more fun than actual sex when you have to deal with the reality. And eventually you're going to have to go back to masturbation when you're old anyway, so... And the reason... The reason it's underrated is because anyone can do it, but that's what makes it so beautiful. It's not elitist, like sex. <laughs> it has nothing to do with looks or money. It's all about the power and creativity of the mind, and really it takes less finger technique than to learn Freebird on the acoustic. <laughs> well, we better stop. My parents are home. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming out.